Hi. This time is a bit different. Um, as you might have guessed from my background, I'm not in Australia, I'm not on the farm. I'm not even on the same continent. In fact, I'm not even on the same hemisphere. I am in Denmark because I am here at my childhood home. Yeah, so this video is a bit special, but I'm still gonna get some tech in here. And uh, well, actually, let me take you inside and I'll, uh, I'll tell you all about what the project is about. Okay, so first of all, here's what we're fixing. The Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> this is an old house and it's got thick walls, a lot of places and uh, Wi-Fi comes in here, right on the front of the house, where I'm sitting, actually it's just behind me, I'll show that in just a second. And the Wi-Fi from this <sighs> telecom provided box thing does not cover the house, not even close. So there is a beautiful repeater halfway, I'll show you that too in just a second, and it's rubbish at best, I think, is fair. Now, I set this up, I gotta to admit to that, about 10 years ago when I knew nothing about network equipment and the quality of the equipment was a bit <clears throat> average. So the plan in this video is that I'm gonna fix the Wi-Fi, but I can't pull any cables, there are no switches, there is nothing. I just gotta cover a house in Wi-Fi, right? And yeah, that's actually quite a neat solution, I think. I think it'll work a treat. Um, but first, let me just show you what we've got to deal with, what we start with, and then I'll sh um, show it to you and explain how we're going to fix it. Hmm? So here's the front of the house, and up there, somewhere, is where the internet connection comes in. I did say wireless. It's not wireless, obviously. It's a wire coming in. I don't even know if it's fiber. I think it is, but it might not be. Um, it, it's, it's questionable. Anyway, it comes in here, into this box, Cables here come in and it goes into that, right? And this just has on the back a, um, well, a connection into it that goes to a TV set top box thing. But that's the only cable there is. And then this just provides Wi Fi from here on the floor. And it doesn't cover anything. All right, let me show you uh, the repeater thing about halfway down the house. So in there is where I just was, in there. And here, about halfway is this monstrosity. Um, yeah, it's an ASUS. I don't know what year it is. It's very old. And the idea is that this somehow repeats the signal of that. However, it's not mesh, so it has its own SSID. In fact, it's a, it has its own 2.4 and 5 gigahertz SSD, as does the other one. So now we have four. SSIDs in the house. Not helpful. And down here, the other end of the house, right down the end, you can see the repeater's just there. Um, yeah, the signal where I'm standing is okay, but as soon as you step in behind one of these walls, it drops. Um, yeah, so you're on a video call and it'll just drop, and it'll come back and then it'll drop, and it's, it's really, really frustrating. So the plan to replace that thing is, of course, Unify, the Express 7, yeah. But not just that, we have a second Express 7 and a third Express 7. Why? Well, we'll get to that. So here's one of the Express 7s, and I'm recording there with an Insta360 camera because I didn't bring any cameras um, for this trip. Anyway, I hope you'll uh, survive the uh, different quality, but I am not going to go through all the specs of the Express 7 because I did do a specific dedicated video on it when it came out, but I will take it out of the box and just explain why I chose these particular devices um, for this project. But first, you know you like it. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Oh, here we go. Yes. All right. So, here is the box, and as always, neatly packaged, that's what it looked like. That's the Express 7. A very nice little box that 
has um, more Wi-Fi and it's gateway, but I'll get to that in just a second. And then we also have just a power supply here because we're going to need that power supply. Very nice. And there's one of these really nice braided cables. I haven't seen these at Cat6 for sale. I only get them in these sort of kits, but it's braided. It's quite nice, actually. And we have some, what else is here? Um, these, I think, are like little rubber feet for the thing. Can we use those? And then, of course, but is a power supply. So this is European because we're in Europe. So that's going to obviously plug into uh, that. And I think that's it. Some warranty information. And um, that's, that's, that's all we've got. Cool. All right. Let me explain why we're using these. Right. So why do we need three of these? Well, actually, three. Right. Why do we need three? Well, it's kind of neat. The Express 7 is a cloud gateway, so you do you know, hook it up to your internet connection, which is what we're going to do. We're going to disconnect the Wi-Fi in that white box, and we're going to use this, the internet connection from it to push, uh, to uh, pass into here. And then we're going to use the Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi 7, from the Express 7. And here's the party trick of the Express 7. I'm only going to use one of them as a cloud gateway, and then the other two are going to be just Wi-Fi 7 access points, which mesh, of course, to the first one. So that means we're going to have a three Wi-Fi 7 access points. And I don't have to pull any cables. But that's the whole point, is that I can't get cables to anything. So these are going to have to mesh. And yes, I could probably do that with, you know, standard access points, but they don't really... um What's the right word? You, you're sort of meant to put them on the ceiling, right? And these, I can't do that here. There, there's no way I'm going to drill something in the ceiling. So these are just going to sit on a desk and in the corner here and on another table and sort of just blend in, hopefully. So that's why I've chosen the Express 7 is that it has this really cool party trick that they work as just an access point as well. And of course, the 10 gig, so you get a 10 gig internet connection, which we don't have here in this house right now, but maybe, who knows? But it also has a two and a half gig uh, LAN port, so we could connect other things to it. Probably a switch, maybe if you want to do that, or a camera or something like that. So that's why I've chosen them. So not only do we get the cloud gateway to manage the new unified network, but we also get access points and we get extra ports just in case for future use. So that's why we're using it. So let's install them and then see how we set it all up. Okay, so it's all installed now. Here's the first one right there. Now this isn't, well, most likely the final location <laughs> perching on top of that, but for now that works just to get it working. Um, so this is the cloud gateway because that is connected to the old um, modem there, which it has to be because I don't have a cable connection to put into the uh, Express 7. So th that's the way it's gotta be, but it works. Um, so that's station number one. That has the internet connection. Um, let's go and look at the next one. And here is the second one sitting out here in the dining room. Um, you might notice a thing here. See if I can focus on it. There we go. See the signal? It says that the it's poor and it's way down. It is working just fine, but maybe we need to reposition some of these at some point. But so far the testing has shown that it, it seems to work just fine. But that's the second one, which is meshing to the one in the lounge room, the one we saw just before. And now I'm in the office 
which is where the third one is. And you can see there's sort of the same uh, low connection or low signal, poor signal. Um, but the main thing is that the signal's really stable. Um, the speed has gone down quite a bit, uh, as you can see on the screen here. I did a speed test for this particular access point, but it is a lot better than what it was. Now, we may have to take this and put it somewhere else. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. But so far, it's a good first attempt, good start. Uh, but we may have to fiddle with it as you normally do. So uh, let me just see, uh, show you how it all looks inside of Unify Network. All right, let me show you how it's all set up in Unify Network. Um, now, it's really simple. If you want to see all the install and everything, check out my other Unify Express 7 video because I go through the setup and everything in a lot more detail. But the essence is that when you find a Unify Express on your phone, in particular, I use my phone, it'll say, is this a new network or an existing network? Right. In other words, do you want to set, up a, set it up as a cloud gateway and get an internet connection in? Or do you want to add this as a access point to an existing network? So with the first one, I said it's a cloud gateway. With the other two, they were access points, right? So let me show you here in Unify uh, Network how it looks. Um, so it's pretty simple. And the whole point of this video is that I'm doing this on the go. Uh, this is a, a very standard scenario of rubbish Wi-Fi that is old and four SSIs, et cetera. Let's upgrade it, right? So that's what I've done. So as always, there's the dashboard of, you know, whatever is running. You can see, of you know, it. It all looks lovely. It's all green. AP density is good, etc. Like that's all lovely. So if I go to the devices, I now have three devices on this network. Um, you can see here that it has assigned itself dot one. So I had one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one was that white box that comes from the uh, internet provider. And now because I've set up a new network, the the, the Express Seven is now in charge of DHCP for everything that connects to it. So it just gets the internet connection. It doesn't use that uh, IP address range, but it has got .1.1. .1. Now, you may argue that you don't want to have the default always. And if you're interested in that, check out my video I did with Richard Campbell about uh, redoing my entire network. <laughs> that was an interesting one. But here we have three of them. So Spisestool is dining room in Danish. That's the second one I showed you. Dynamite Express is the cloud gateway, and you can see here that it's online. That's usually how it looks slightly different. And Contour is Office. This is where I am right now. So the, that access point is right there next to me. Right. So um, those are the three. They've got an IP addresses, and you can see over here, uplink is mesh. Right. We could connect them with a cable if we had one, but we don't. So they are meshing together, and that's why we got that poor signal um, but the connection seems really stable, albeit a slightly slower down this end of the house. Um, but we can fiddle with that and see if we can make that better. Um, and we can see here we have got the three bands because it's Wi-Fi 7, right? So one of the party tricks is that it's Wi-Fi 7. So we get 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz. Um, and there are, well, I'm connected down here. So we can, uh, well, actually I'm connected. Yeah, contort here. So let's just have a look at that. And you can see here that the, 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 the signal says it's poor. It is not great. But yeah, I, you can put in the comments saying, oh, you should make it better, blah, blah, blah. It actually works. But even though it says that it actually works. In my experience, Unify is always quite conservative when it comes to these estimates of what is poor and what is not. The, the, well, the signal strength is the signal strength, but the quality of the signal is actually quite good still. So um, that's the strength of it. We have here um connections so there is one on the 6 gigahertz which is my pixel 9 pro xl so that's a wi-fi 7 device and we have one on uh 5 gigahertz which is my computer i would assume which is you can see them here um and then we have just a model you know the usual stuff that comes with any of the access points we have some stats around uh, 2.4 and 5. i might use that when uh if i get around to actually try and improve the um, connections and the signal strength, etc. I may use these values here of trying to figure out what the transmit power is and up that maybe a little bit on one, etc, etc. So we'll, we'll play around with that. Um, but that's not for this video, um, because I don't have all the equipment to do that properly. <laughs> um, and 
uh, yeah, just all the bands. So then we also have some, well, we can see, sorry, we can see the mesh parent here is the species tube, the dining room. And the signal is red. We knew that. Oh, it just went to yellow. Um, okay. So the insights we can just see here, there's not much utilized on the farm. This is much more. There's a lot more. You can see here, a lot more, uh, noise on the farm on the 2.4 because of all my OT devices. There are none here. So it's much better. Um, there's a lot more room to use here. Um, that's the usual stuff. Uh, history. I updated it. Yeah, sure. And then we have some settings. You can change the name. Uh, with the radios, I've mentioned this in several videos, but I'll do it again. 2.4, I always leave at 20 megahertz because there just isn't much bandwidth. So using 20 is probably the best choice. And a lot of devices, especially IoT devices that tend to use 2.4, like your vacuum cleaner or your fridge or whatever, can't actually use 40 anyway. So it connects via 20 megahertz. So just leave it at 20. Uh, transmit power, I may change that because auto doesn't always give the right results, but so I may change that. And then we have the same with five gigahertz. I usually leave that at 80 because you get two channels with 80. If you go to 160, you only get one, right? Um, so I may change that, I'm not sure. Transmit power, again, again, I might change that. Not sure, I'm not sure. And then six gigahertz, you can put it at 320 if you want. I don't actually know of any devices yet that can use 320. Maybe the very latest iPhones and Google Pixels and those sort of Samsung phones, maybe they can use it 320 on, on 6 gigahertz. But so far, even this 9 Pro, Pro XL, whatever it's called, can only use 160. So two minds whether I want to change that or not. And then we can mesh to parent. We kind of have to, right? And the uplink priority uh, is auto. That's fine. They can only go one way, really, um, in this scenario. And it just gets the HCP because we only got a few devices on there, not a lot. Um, but that's it. So in terms of actually setting these up as access points, it's when you adopt them into your system, you say, is it a new or cloud gateway or is it an existing network access point? That's as simple as that. So um, yeah, that's that's how easy it is to set it up and how simple it is in Unifine World. So I hope you enjoyed this little interlude from uh, from Denmark. Um, because now my parents have amazing Wi-Fi. Well, they have Wi-Fi that doesn't drop out. And it's just such a nuisance because guess who gets the calls when something doesn't work, even though I'm halfway around the world. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed um, a little video from Denmark. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing because that's how we grow the channel. That's how I get to do more videos like this on the go. And uh, well, leave a comment, thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.